Hello, I'm going to give you a quick preview of Fair 2D. I'm going to create an object here, uh, which you can use with Control T and Control Shift T. Um, and this is the, the default terrain that you get. You can move the points around with your mouse. Um, you can also Control Shift to select multiple points and move those around as well. You can use Shift to add in additional points to your terrain quickly. Or you can also click on the little uh, plus buttons at the midpoints to add detail that way. Um, you can also uh, do a couple of other things with what you've got here. These, these little icons near the path points are called tabs. And you can override the uh, existing direction by saying, like, I want a, an up direction here. And um, this can force the, the, the terrain to follow a, a particular edge instead of automatically determining this. So you have some extra control there. Um, you also have the option to scale individual edge points, and this allows you to add in some extra visual variety to uh, your terrain, um, especially since you can get a lot of loopy sort of feeling uh, pieces to your environment. So this just helps add in a little bit of extra variety, which is nice. Um, you can also hide the tabs entirely if you want to. Um, that way they don't get in the way. Um, you can delete points by just holding down Alt um, and clicking on a point, and that will delete it. You can also reset a tab back to its original state by holding down Alt and clicking on that tab point. Okay. Um, Fair 2D also has some pretty nice snap settings available to it. Um, by default, it should be on Snap Global, which basically means uh, when you hold down Control, it will snap to your Unity snap settings relative to the origin of the scene. Now, this is really nice because it helps you line your terrain up with other terrain objects that are also snapped uh, to global coordinates. Okay, You also have a couple of different options. You can snap relative to the... Uh, origin of your current terrain object, or you can have it snap relative to the starting point of that path, which is uh, kind of the, the Unity default, the way that Unity normally snaps. Okay. There's also a snap, smart snap feature, which will snap your points automatically to the, the nearby verts. So you can see here, this one is snapping to these pieces here uh, on the horizontal axis. and it, that will help you line things up really well with it. Um, this really works great for any sort of like non-organic or uh, rigid sort of structure environment um, because it, it really helps you line things up quickly. Okay, as you can see there, this is already a, a perfect grid, um, which is really really great. Um, so Smart Snap is a really nice feature. Okay. Um, We've also got a couple of, of other things over here. If we look over in the, the, the inspector, uh, there's the smooth path option, which will allow you to smooth the terrain. And as you can see here, it adds in an, uh, a lot of, I'm gonna turn off smart snap because smoothing doesn't work great with smart snap. Um, you can get these beautiful curves that, that really smooth out your terrain. And this will work on colliders too, so you can get really smooth looking colliders on your on your ground. Um, so uh, and you can you can change the, the density of how smooth things are. So you can have it um, like let me show you the meshes. As you can see here, this is the, the mesh for the smoothed object. By default, it only does two slices on the smoothing, but you can change that up and like increase it or reduce it down or whatever. It depends on what you want. Um, so you get a little flexibility there. Uh, I, smoothing is off by default just to avoid a lot of the extra verts. I, I will frequently use smoothing for my primary terrain, like the terrain that the player interacts with. And then in the background or the foreground, I'll have terrain that's not smoothed at all, just because it's for decoration. Uh, most people don't notice it. Um, so uh, there's also a couple of different fill types for the terrain. Um, by default, this is set to closed, but we can change this to, for example, inverted closed, which will create an interior environment for you really easily. Um, and we've also got a couple of options for um, fill only 
so that it uh, removes the edge materials. This is really great if you've got kind of this uh, vectorized sort of look to your, your games and you don't want any of that edge, extra edge material for it. Um, so it, it all depends on what you're trying to create, but it's, it's a really nice option if it does fit into what you're working with. Um, and this will look a little bit weird when I first create it though. Um, the skirt options um, basically allow you to um, treat the ground as though it's this left to right sort of uh, environment, like a, a runner or a platformer or something. Basically where you have to go from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen or something like that. It's just a, a quick shorthand for doing this, this top edge only sort of terrain. And it's really useful, makes it a little bit easier for creating terrain like this. Okay. And again, we also have a fill only skirt mode. So if, if you're doing that vector style sort of thing. Um, we've also got uh, a good set of collider information. So uh, right now I created a, a terrain that does, doesn't have any colliders. So you don't see any sort of collision information. Uh, if I go down here to create collider, uh, this will then put a green line around it to indicate that there's a collider being generated there. So I'm going to switch to a different material to show the collider a little bit better. Um, so as you can see here, the collider follows the path pretty much. Um, and that's not always what you want. Uh, this is specific to, to each material. But in this case, we'd probably want this edge to be up a little higher so that the, the player's feet interact more with the center of the edge. So we can just change the offset for each of these sides. Offset top, move that up to about the middle, and there we go. Uh, same thing with the right side and the left side. We can just adjust this edge out a little bit. And on the left side. And so this allows you to tweak your colliders in, in a way that makes it a lot more uh, visually accurate. Another thing you might see here, we have these rounded sort of edges that go with our terrain. In some cases this works, in some cases it doesn't. I've got a sharp corners option here, which will then just turn that corner into a point. Uh, so that's really great. Um, also, by default, Fair2D will create a 2D collider. If you aren't interested in 2D colliders, or if the 3D colliders just work better for your project, there is a use 3D collider trigger, um, which will let you switch back and forth. So you can give that a try if that works better for you. Also, a nice little feature is you can hide colliders for certain edges. So if you don't want anything on the left or the right sides, you can just disable these and that will let you like jump over or jump through or walk through, kind of like some of those Mario sort of environments or whatever. Um, but that's another option that will let you play with. Um, another thing that I want to show you real quick is some of the visual options. Um, we can, I'm going to create a duplicate here and put this in the background. Uh, control D, move it back a little bit, and just kind of bring this out a little so that you can kind of see it when presented from the front. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit there, a little bit out and about. Now, um, so over here in the visual section, we have the vertex color, and this will go through and set each point to a specific color, which will let you do things like uh, tint the background and make it a little bit darker. And that gives you kind of like this, this clearer separation between foreground and background. You can also do things like use it to tint the terrain for lighting. So maybe make this kind of like a sunsetty orange glow sort of thing. Uh, same thing with the background here, just a darker orange glow. So you, you've got a lot of flexibility as far as what you can do with uh, the coloring there, too. Um, another thing that's really nice is the pixels per unit. And this allows, um, it, it basically tells Fair2D how many pixels to try and fit in a single Unity unit. Okay, And this also helps you match up with your sprites, since those sprites are determined based off of a similar sort of metric, to make sure that your pixel fill is the same for both items. Uh, so like I can change this down to 32 and make it bigger. Now this is this is really great if you've got an orthographic camera and you're trying to um, add some sort of little perspective to it. 
so the objects in the foreground are bigger than objects in the background. So you can tweak the, the pixels per unit there too, just to, to make that look a little bit nicer. Okay. So um, that's great. Um, there's a lot of things that Fair 2D can do, and honestly, we probably just only scratched the surface. So uh, I've got some more videos. You can check those out, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the tool. Thanks for watching, guys.